Saints versus Pompey, the South Coast Derby. Often overlooked when it comes to the fiercest rivalries in English football, but possibly the fiercest of them all. The two clubs have only ever met on the pitch in fits and starts, usually whilst one is on the rise and the other in decline. Perhaps it is the rarity of these contests that adds an extra something to this derby. Whilst other derbies are fuelled by battles for trophies, this one pretty much survives on pure hatred. Maybe it's because both sets of fans know that when they meet, it could be a long time before they get a shot at re revenge should the day end badly, but the rivalry on those occasions is so intense. Whatever the reason, there is something about this rivalry that leaves those who experience it convinced there is nothing like it in the English game. I speak as a lifelong fan of one of these clubs who, for a few years in the late 90s and early 2000s, had a season ticket to watch the other one. I'll explain why later. They also now live in that grey area on the south coast that exists nervously between the two cities, neither passionately Pompey or certainly Saints. This save will, hopefully, see that sporadic rivalry turn into one that decides league and even European glory. Welcome to the South Coast Showdown. Welcome to Portsmouth. This is our manager, Trevor Skate. Um, now, one thing to note about the two managers in this save, they both have identical attributes because I didn't want anyone to have an advantage there. So, um, yeah, Trevor Skate has exact same attributes as the Southampton manager. We'll have a brief look at our tactics. Um, the tactics for both sides are very similar. Uh, both playing 4-3-3. There are some differences. Basically, the back six are effectively exactly the same. Goalkeeper, two central defenders, two full backs, a defensive midfielder. All with the same roles. The difference comes in the front five. Um, and Portsmouth here have a ball winning midfielder and a central midfielder on attack trying to get into the box. They've got a deep line forward up front sort of dropping off and making the space hopefully for that central midfielder. And a couple of inside forwards cutting in and trying to get into the box as well. We have done a few transfers. Uh, now we had, I'll cover the outs first. Michael Jacobs was basically surplus requirements. So we put him on the transfer list and Dundee United have come in and given us £61,000 for him. We've also sent out a couple of players on loan um, who just aren't really all that good and I wanted them out of the way. Coming in, we have got quite a few people here on loan. Um, Joe Piggott, Owendale, Josh Caroma, Josh Griffiths and Dane Scarlett were all loans that were arranged before I got here. Despite getting Josh Griffiths, who is a goalkeeper, on loan from West Brom, um, and indeed signing Joshua Oluwayemi from Tottenham on a free, another goalkeeper, I brought in a third one, Jack Bonham, who I believe is better than both, uh, for 45,000 rising to 50. Uh, I'm not quite sure on what basis it rises to 50, and I'm honestly not in the mood to look. Um, and yeah, I think he's basically just better than the other two. And Matthew Pennington here is... I don't know if he's going to be like starting at right back, but he's he's a right back centre back, good backup for both. A uh, little bit pricey, um, considering how much money I had left thanks to these ridiculous deals. And we've not long signed uh, four days ago, in fact, uh, Tyree Wilson, who is uh, probably a backup wide player. Uh, we needed another one who was left footed, I think, to come in off the right, and um, he is that so yeah so we've not made many um transfers mainly because i didn't have very much money uh almost all of that amount spent was not by me one transfer saga that has been rumbling on for a few weeks now is the ryan tunnicliffe affair now ryan came to me and he's out of contract at the end of this season and he came to me saying I'm considering me options, which basically means he wants out. So I try and convince him that um, he's an important player here because, frankly, he is. He is one of my starting central midfielders, or he would be, if he was sticking around. 
and I wanted him to stay. I expressed that opinion. He was still shouting his mouth off about wanting to leave and didn't want to be stuck around here and etc etc. So I t- told him basically, well suck it up, I want you here, you're staying. I then get about eight of the squad, which considering how many people are fit around here is about half of them, turn up saying that they think I'm treating him unfairly. Uh, I then pointed out that I couldn't understand why they wanted one of our better players to leave and weaken the squad. They weren't having that. No, it's still unfair on Ryan Tunnicliffe. We demand you let him go. So rather than annoy half the squad, I thought, right, okay, fine. So I put him up for transfer. Got a couple of bids in, Shrewsbury and Plymouth, I think. Uh, 39 grand, not quite what he's worth, but, you know, needs must. So I accept them. Then his scummy little agent comes rocking up saying, oh, well, to complete these deals, I want nearly 20 grand. Um, guess what my reaction to that was? So, I've now got Ryan Tunnicliffe who thinks, I think, that he has been promised that he, yes, he thinks he's been promised that I will sell him. And it's not like I haven't accepted bids. But his agent is gumming up the works by asking for money that I am never going to give him. Especially as I actually want the boy to stay. Um, so that will be interesting when he finally gets fed up when the the transfer window closes in a month's time and he realises he's still here. Um, And of course it won't be a simple case of, as in real life, I would sit down and say, well, your agent has screwed things up for you by demanding cash for money with menaces, basically. Um, No, he's just going to get hacked off. The rest of the squad will probably get hacked off saying, you said you were going to sell him and you haven't. So somewhere around early September, this is all going to go to hell in a handbasket. So... Let's hope we have a good August day. Brief explanation required. Uh, Basically, because I'm an idiot, I got two thirds of the way through Portsmouth's opening game of the season before I realised I hadn't started recording. So what is about to come is the highlights after the event. Um, I've done my best to commentate as if I didn't know the score and I've tried to hide the score which would have appeared in the top of the screen. But um, basically, just know that the result is because I'm an idiot. Lowry swings in the corner. Hack it! Glances it into the far post. 1-0 Portsmouth. Three minutes gone. Okay, Hack it. Charging forward again. Loops up. Easy for Stockdale. by Wednesday but it's going to come back Rafferty launches it right yes could be Wednesday's chance now taking them a while to get into the game they do seem to be heading with more purpose towards that Portsmouth goal passing it about nicely in midfield Bappinson Mighton, it's the post. Wednesday. Building again. Dink through Windass. He's hit the other post. Wednesday have hit both posts in this first half. <clears throat> Into the second half. And as well. Not necessarily aimless ball, but asking a lot of Dale to keep winning those. Don't think it's what he's built for. And here come Wednesday again. Iwafa plays it forward. Missed the header. Mighton blazes wide. Well, Wednesday have had their chances. They just have not put them away yet. And... And they work a chance from this one. Well, Dale has picked it off. Paul 
Portsmouth building carefully. Played back to pack, fires just wide. It's Portsmouth's first real chance for a while. Okay, thrown in but easily pits off by Raggett. Colby Bishop will get himself onto that one. Rico Hackett, the goal scorer. Charging forward. Oh, this is a good run by Rico Hackett. Play back to Rafferty. Oh, flashed past that far post. Rafferty gets it across. Curtis! Stuck over the hand to it, but couldn't keep it out. Curtis makes it 2-0. And surely, from here, Portsmouth will hold on. Oof. Well, that was a good challenge. Colby Bishop. Oh, he's played Hackett in. Can he finish it? Oh, he's dinked it and he's hit the post. Well, that particular post has been hit twice. Okay, quick little update. The Papa John's Trophy. We've been drawn into Group G of the Southern Section with AFC Wimbledon, Chelsea Under-21s and Northampton. Uh, looks like the top two get out, so... AFC Wimbledon and Northampton in there, we would be expecting to at least finish second in that group. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, time to meet the Southampton manager, Reiner Skummer, a uh, 41-year-old German. And um, as I probably said for the Portsmouth uh, one, has exactly the same attributes as Trevor Skate. Uh, so they're on an equal footing. And... Okay, now transfer-wise, um, going out, not a lot to speak of. Uh, Matthew Hall and Jack Stewart were two players that I just don't think are going to make it. Uh, Fedel Ross Lang has gone out to Cheltenham on loan. He's a potentially reasonable youngster. Now, Samuel Adozi is highly rated, um, and we've sent him to Championship Bristol City. Uh, so hopefully, if he can have a good season there and improve a bit, um, that will do us a few favours, but... Yeah. Uh, now, uh, bringing players in, obviously Southampton have spent quite a bit of money before I took over. Uh, I have brought in defensive midfielder Pafé Cis for three and a half, rising to four million. Senegalese, uh, not quite an international yet, but we are hoping. And just a decent, solid player for our sort of level. Um, like I say, he's going to be doing the defensive midfield role. Only wanted squad player as well, so we're not going to upset him by not picking him. Uh, now, I signed this youngster, Harrison Ashby, uh, from West Ham. Got a decent uh, amount of potential. We kind of needed a right back. He's not really exactly what we need um, at the moment, but hopefully he'll, he'll come on and uh, possibly slot in. Now, Paul Dummett. Uh, again, we needed a... A better left back because Perrault, bless him, whilst he does seem to start for Southampton in real life, possibly shouldn't. Um, and certainly Dummett here, who is not the youngest, he's 30. But again, he only wanted squad player. He can also cover centre back, so he was useful from that perspective. And he's probably going to be my starting uh, right back. He's consistent, not too bad on big matches, a little bit injury prone. Now, Selim Amala is going to be playing the central midfield attacking role when he's in. He'll probably be sharing duties there with uh, Joe Aribo. And again, solid for our sort of level, mainly sort of 13s, 14s, a couple of 15s. Um, and Moroccan international. And impressed on his debut where I believe, yes, he scored a hat-trick on, uh, on his debut in a friendly. And the very exciting one, 18-year-old Norwegian Andreas Scheller, Schell, Schelderup, <laughs> tripping over his name, um, signed him play left wing. Uh, like I say, he's 18, he's got fantastic potential. He is actually described somewhere, um, or at least he was, as a wonder kid. We did also have a little bit of a problem getting him in the door, um, because... I didn't realise, uh, when I went to sign him, um, 
we had the money in the transfer kitty. I didn't realise that hadn't taken account of Selim Amala's fee of five million. And then, of course, the following day, I get a message saying, oh, we haven't got enough money to buy shelter up, and we haven't got the wages to be able to shift over to the transfer kitty. So that was a bit weird. But then I spoke to the board and said, I think he's going to be amazing. And they were like, yeah, all right, here's the money. So, yay, board. Well done. So, yeah. Um, that is our signings. Now, a quick look at our tactics. Uh, playing a 4-3-3, back six, exactly the same style as the Portsmouth side um, that you will probably have seen by this point. Um, but central midfield box to box and central midfield attack. So we're supposed to press um, at Southampton. They want us to play a pressing game. So I figured box to box and central midfield attack are going to push forward and try and press. Uh, we've got our wingers hopefully pushing forward. We've got a pressing forward. And we are going like high press, trying to close people down from goal kicks, counter press when we're in transition, all that sort of uh, stuff. And of course, I am, I've am i put play for set pieces on, uh, which I know is a bit of a lower league sort of thing. But when you've got JWP in the squad, you play for set pieces. The man's a god at set pieces. So why would I not play for them when I've got someone that good at taking them? But anyway, yeah, so that's, in brief, the tactic. It's Southampton's first home game of the season. Well, first game of the season. It's home to Leicester. Uh, we are expected to draw. We are expected to be mid-table. So we're about as exciting as it gets, to be perfectly honest. Uh, right, Alex McCarthy is back fit. Uh, now, Portsmouth have Lincoln um, today, so we'll update you on what actually happens in in that game. I just know Jamie Vardy would have torn me a new one. Right, here we go. Off and running at St Mary's. And, well, hasn't it been a thrilling first ten minutes? Oh, right, well, we're going to throw out some encouragement because this is probably... Oh, it's England's Madison. Okay. In the last half, Adams... Oh! Shielder up! The wonder kid! It's about the easiest goal he'll ever score. But 13 and a half minutes into his Southampton debut... And he never even played any of the friendlies. Um, and uh, he gives us the lead. Right, yep, yeah, we don't need to know if it's a tight offside. You've given the goal. That's all that matters. Can't quite shout we are top of the league, because we're not. But, you know, factual accuracy obviously being important to Southampton fans. Armstrong! Oh! I thought Stuart Armstrong was going to head that in for a minute then. Okay, they are playing out from the back with that sort of thing. So let's let's just go to here. Oh, we are on prevent short goalkeeper distribution. Good stuff. Oh, Stuart Armstrong. He's Got in there, knocks it back to a rebo. Walker Peters fires it home. Oh. <clears throat> now, I have just realised that I may. Oh no, no, I've done the right thing. That's fine. No, I thought for one horrible minute I'd put uh, Stuart Armstrong kind of on the wrong side of the pitch, but he is right-footed, so he's perfectly happy over there. As you can see, he's terrorising Leicester. And Southampton, 2-0 up. Approaching half-time. Let's not gift them a goal, boys. Get them back into a game they haven't really threatened in. And there we go. Of course we have. Brilliant. Well done. James Bloody Madison. 
England's bench warmer. Right. I know you're capable of better. Don't be nervous, done it. Don't be nervous. Right, come on, boys. We clearly outplayed this lot. We really need to actually, you know, prove that we're the better side by winning the game. That will be good. Right, this is a nice dull second half. I'm liking this. <clears throat> when we're winning, anyway. Okay, let's have a butcher's. Anyone a bit now? Yeah, see. Uh, right. Well, let's put Perrault on. Now, Pathé Cis has now got all nervous. Uh, right, I'm going to stick Lavia on there. Let's try not to get him sent off. Um, and Shelder up. I mean, he's he's not quite as sharp, so he's going to tire a little quicker. Um, and Armstrong can play left wing, apparently. So now we've got Armstrongs on both wings. We're strong-arming them. <laughs> I'll get me coat. Okay, this will do. Well, that's an unusual sensation for a Southampton fan. Winning! Yay! Alright, let's tell the boys they did well. We weren't at our best, but we did win. My word, that wasn't at our best. Good lord. So, quick look at Portsmouth's game on the same day as that Southampton one. 2-0 uh, home win over Lincoln. Uh, took the lead with one of our few chances in the first half and uh, completely dominated the second half. They had these nine shots all in the first half. They didn't do a thing second half. Um, and we came on strong, got a second goal. 2-0 win again. Brilliant stuff. So a pretty successful start to the season. Portsmouth, two wins out of two, third place. Saints, an opening day win. Currently Champions League, but we know that won't last. Um, so, thank you for joining me on what I hope is the start of uh, a long and successful journey with both these teams. And uh, just remains for me to say, like, comment and subscribe. And uh, it's goodbye from Trevor, goodbye from Reiner. Thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.